So I went back recently and noticed that on March 15th, 2011, I had wrote down the first kind of initial ideas of this game that I was initially just calling for some stupid reason, uh, Project Binary. And it basically had, you know, a lot of the same kind of core elements that we have in Republic today. You know, the importance of, of character performance and facial performance on mobile, and really just trying to push the boundaries in terms of narrative, and players have this emotional connection with these characters. I've known Ryan for more than 10 years. Uh, we've been uh, good friends, and even when he lived in Japan, we stayed in touch uh, for a long time. And when he moved back to the States, we started to meet up regularly and talk about his work, what was going on. And then there, I got a phone call one time, uh, and he had just come to the conclusion that, that he was going to start his own game studio. And, uh, and he said, uh, he asked if I wanted to come along for the ride. I says, Ryan, the economy's bad. Don't do it. He says, Dad. I'm burnt out, I want to do my own thing. I says, wait, you're not even 30 yet, just wait. Well, he didn't listen to his dad, he just went ahead and did it. And I was just thinking about what I'm going to do next, and I really wasted no time. I, uh, I teamed up with a guy named uh, Matt Brown, or Mabro, as we like to call him, and uh, he and I started putting together this prototype of this game called Republic. I had applied to just about every studio in Seattle. I sent, uh, I sent him an email, I found his personal email, because I found his personal uh, website. I was like, what are the chances, you know? You know, Ryan gave me an art test, and I spent about 10 days of panic attacks and, you know, <laughs> obsessively working, not sleeping. I remember the first time going into Ryan's apartment, and that's where we worked out of, and there was just one long desk, and um, I sat between, sandwiched between Paulo and Ryan right in the middle, and we just kind of squeezed in. And it's like as much as any startup could ever be, right? Both working out of a bedroom and on one desk together. Human Condition was the prototype that really was trying to explore a different, a lot of the core elements of the game, uh, namely uh, navigating hope throughout you know, a 3D environment with just simple mouse clicks as we're trying to emulate what would just be a simple tap on, on mobile. Uh, we wanted to, to experiment with the ideas of, of viewing from different surveillance cameras that you can then either manually switch to or that as you're moving hope throughout the environment they start to auto switch like uh, you know, those classical uh, survival horror games. And so, you know, using Unity, uh, we were doing anything and everything we could to, you know, under budget, as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, um, to try to get the, just the core concept playable. We didn't have animator or anything, so we had store-bought animation set that we were using, and things were popping in and out, and it was, it, just, it was just hilarious, but it was working, right? And the whole point of it, really, was to test out if we had a great game idea and to see if it was actually fun. It was not really, really a game. It was more like a ex experimenting game, different game designs, trying to figure out what was the, could be like the best game that we can do for like touch devices. So it was really fun because it was like just kind of like humble beginnings. It was just like uh, at the beginning, it was just Ryan and I crunching together, like trying to figure out like what was the best ideas for the game. Ezra actually started right after me, oh, probably at the same time. And um, he was still working at home because we didn't have room for him because <laughs> we didn't have enough desks at that time. And um, he just took the rein and just started making things happen. He just like hole up and just built stuff, bang stuff out and come back and we're just like wowed by how much progress he was making. From the first day, you could just the, the whole vision of Republic really started to come together when Ezra come, came onto the team. But Ezra being the, mo the you know, just this, this prolific creative guy was just all night, all night he was going. He never stopped. We went to one, uh, one of our industry colleague friends and uh, we had a very sobering discussion with him. He basically said, I get all of what you want to do, but in this day and age, that's impossible. If you want to do this type of game in the budget that you're talking about, you're gonna have to sell your soul. That's the way that the business works. And nobody's gonna give you this money so you can then walk away with this IP that you've created and then do what you want with it. And we're thinking, okay, we're running out of money. What are we gonna do? And I, I remember specifically looking on my iPhone and just looking at the news and this was like the day after Double Fine just went nuclear on Kickstarter. Prepping for GDC was really the first time that we were going to start talking to people outside the small core group. Uh, so we were talking to other game developers, we were talking to journalists. We had a lot more people, was, we were hustling and bustling, and we were working, I don't know exactly, because it never stopped. 
the team is crunching like crazy and we knew about a week before, two weeks before GDC that we weren't going to do everything that we wanted to do. We weren't gonna be able to bring that polished high quality trailer and launch our Kickstarter at GDC. And I think in retrospect, it turned out okay. The first press interview I didn't think went very well. The guy didn't seem very interested in our concept um, and that brought, gave me a lot of pause. And Matt Brown, you know, outsider dev. Got me a little too drunk on my first GDC. But anyways, it didn't feel good, first of all, and I had to really use the bathroom. And Ryan is talking to two journalists. And mind you, this is early on when I, you know, I'm still trying to make a good impression on Ryan, you know? Like, we don't have, you know, full-time positions yet. We're, everything's in limbo. We're all crazy. But I can't hold this. I need to get in there. And I had to walk through the room where he's doing the interviews and showing the game into the bathroom and, um, you know, they had no fans in this bathroom. This is how old the building was. That, the look of terror on my face when I saw it, when I realized that, I was just like, I'm going to have to be in here for an hour, you know? I'm going to have to open up these vents, start fanning, and just sit here and run the water, hope it absorbs the air somehow or something. I did that, like, and, uh, you know, I was just trying to be, like, super, like, you know, kind of op open the door, slide out, and just kind of slink through the room and... Never see these people again, hopefully ever. The good news is that we started off pretty bad, and then after that, like, the press seemed really, really interested in the, in the concept, and uh, there was a lot of encouragement. And just showing two screenshots and saying, yes, this is actually running on the iPhone, and yes, we're gonna ship this next year, you can already see people getting really excited about the idea. April 9th, uh, that was the day that I was gonna get the whole Kickstarter page ready to go live on that following morning. and. Uh, I thought it'd be done by like maybe 10 p.m. or something like that, and I was up all night getting that page perfect. I felt like, you know what, this is such a polished Kickstarter presentation. We've, we've got all the answers for anybody's questions. People are gonna love this really ambitious AAA project. When we go live on the morning of April 10th, we're going to make Kickstarter history. Uh, well, I remember the day that um, the Kickstarter launched. Um, I, I congratulated Ryan, and I thought that it looked great. And next thing I hear from him, he's like, yeah, that wasn't a very good day. So finally I texted him and I was like, please just let me help, give me the passwords to everything. And he finally gave me the passwords to like Facebook and Twitter and the Kickstarter page. When the Kickstarter first week didn't start off as fast as we anticipated, uh, then we were slowly becoming demoralized and we weren't sure how this was going to end up because in essence, Kickstarter was our second attempt to get outside objective feedback on what was going on. So we had a great GDC experience and then we went into this lull with Kickstarter. I still look back, it was pro one of the more exciting w months in my life. It was like a Super Bowl that lasted for a month. And the excitement and you know those, those disappointing days when it did eight hundred dollars and we got to get to five hundred thousand in thirty days you know, how are we going to get there i'm sleep deprived uh, i'm super stressed out uh, we just been crunching literally for four months straight um, actually before that too i mean we're talking maybe five or six months uh, my personal life is in a total mess and uh and i need help and i i uh one of the things I, I didn't do, again, because I expected our Kickstarter project to go very well, is that I didn't make a plan for the 30-day Kickstarter campaign. I made a plan for the day one, thinking that it was gonna go well. It took me about a week to wake up to this whole thing, but thanks to some friends like Billy Berghammer and Selena Rodriguez, uh, I finally started to understand that, you know what, I need some help. I think one of the, one of the worst times in the entire Kickstarter uh, campaign was actually the second day. The second day was we had this plan as a team that we're gonna come together and you know, we were crunching for a while and we decided to take a day off or two. And uh, we decided to meet at a, at, a, at a pizza place for lunch. So we get there, order some pizza. It doesn't matter that it's good pizza because uh, <laughs> it's gonna taste bad anyway because that's the way it really was. It was just like, um, okay. And we're like, okay, we need to figure out a game plan. Okay, we have three weeks left. We wanted to do daily updates. Okay, how many screenshots? We got, what, we have like 20, 30? No, we have one screenshot that hasn't been shown yet. Can we get any more? No, we can't get any more screenshots. Awesome. Uh, Ryan is kind of obsessed with NeoGAF, so um, like a lot of his comments had to do with something that he read on NeoGAF, and a lot of things that he was reacting to had a lot to do with things that he read on NeoGAF, so I decided to like dabble. What can you tell me about NeoGAF? Neo Gaff. Uh, nothing. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. 
every morning. It just became my obsession to check NeoGAF, and I would send Ryan things that I saw in NeoGAF, and he's like, who are you right now? After some of the announcements, some of the things that we were doing, uh, we started getting more traction. The Keep Hope Alive thing, I think, helped a little bit, but you know, when we announced PC, that was a, that was we saw a big spike there. When we announced David Hayter and Jennifer Hale, that's when we really saw a really big push. Once we made the Jennifer Hale and David Hayter announcement, like that's when all like the fans came out and like represented. That was a really good moment. I mean, I felt like that definitely was one of those moments like you just like, can't forget where you felt like you were actually like there was actually like, a chance. I think that's the time um, we just like started to going up every day, and uh, that's probably how we got to uh, the end finish line. I had just looked away from my iPad for like five minutes and looked back and we, and we hit the goal. And I'm getting choked up right now, but I, I lost it. <laughs> that was probably one of the most exciting things I've ever been a part of. When we finally hit our Kickstarter goal, I think we became like a real studio, we had a real game. We actually did it, we did it. We, we made a Kickstarter, it worked. We, got, we raised over half a million dollars. People like us, you know? It was probably one of the best days of my life to see that my son had reached that goal that he set, which was pretty aggressive, 500,000. And I think uh, during that month, Ryan was probably second guessing that, that goal, which, was, uh, which of course he achieved. I knew that a lot of the challenge that we had faced, a lot of those late nights, a lot of the stress and the fights, and that was good that we went through there, but I also had the sneaking suspicion that we we're gonna go through a lot more moving forward, and, but I was still excited about that, that next chapter, about actually making the game.